Hello, thanks for joining me for how to get a great credit score as part of the Athens County Public Library's How To Fest. And a big thanks to the library for including me. My name is Eva Bloom. I work with the Ohio University Credit Union as an education specialist. And we're gonna talk about the things that we can do to build or maintain a strong credit score today. But before we get started, I do wanna just mention that I know it's a really difficult time financially for a lot of people as the result of the coronavirus and that there might be questions about how that financial difficulty is going to affect their credit scores. If we're struggling to make our payments and worried about late payments, the best thing to do is to contact your lender and find out what programs they may have to help out during this time. I know that a lot of lenders, including the credit union, have come up with specific solutions to help people through the current health situation. If you do have specific questions about this, I will be available on Facebook Live after this and would be more than happy to answer anything that I can for you. Let's get started by talking a little bit about our credit report. Your credit report is held by three different companies, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. These companies can all have different information about you, depending on who your lender or service provider reports that information to. The information on this report is what makes up your credit score. So I think it's really important to understand what is actually on the report in the first place. We can find out what's on our credit report by requesting a free copy. The best place to do that is annualcreditreport.com. That website's circled on this slide. Ordinarily, you can get one copy from each of the three bureaus every 12 months. But due to the current health situation, the bureaus are providing additional access, so now you have the ability to pull a credit report from each of the three bureaus every week. It's important to realize that this credit report is not actually going to include your credit score. But because the score is made up of the information on your report, it's the best place to understand what we need to do in order to make a change to our credit score. When we talk about our credit score, most of the time we're talking about our FICO score. This is a particular scoring model that is the most widely used in the US today. In fact, it's used by about 90% of major US lenders. The FICO score has a range from 300 to 850. 300 being the lowest, 850 being the highest. In case you were wondering, the average credit score for someone in the US is 704. FICO uses a complicated algorithm to determine your score. It's made up of five main categories, payment history, amounts owed, new credit, length of credit history, and credit mix. We are gonna dig into each of those categories so that you can understand a little bit more about how they affect the final number. Payment history is the biggest factor in your score at 35%. Missing a payment can cause some serious damage, but not all missed payments are gonna affect the score in the same way, and we're gonna talk about that in just a second. First, it's important to realize that when I'm talking about a missed payment, I'm talking about a payment that is more than 30 days late. Payments that are less than 30 days late don't show up on your credit report, and so they don't have an effect on your score. That doesn't mean it's okay to make your payments 28 days late because you'll still probably have to pay a late fee and you might damage your relationship with your lender, which can make it harder for you to get a loan from them in the future. But just keep in mind when we're talking about an effect on the credit score, that's a payment that's at least 30 days past due. How late the payment actually is can determine how big of an impact it's going to have. A payment that is 30 days late is going to have less of an impact than one that is 60 or 90 or 120 days late. How much the payment was for can also make a difference. If I miss a $15 minimum payment on my credit card, that's not gonna hurt my score as much as if I miss a $500 payment for my auto loan, for example. How many payments were missed 
is definitely going to play a factor. If I miss more than one payment, it's just going to multiply the negative impact on my score. And lastly, how recently a payment was missed also counts. The credit score is going to take into account the most recent information as the highest impact on the score. So if it's been several months or maybe even a year since I've missed a payment, the impact that that payment is going to have on my score is going to start to get less and less over time. The second biggest part of the credit score is amounts owed at 30%. That includes a few different factors. First, the credit utilization ratio. Your credit utilization is a comparison of the amount of credit you have available versus what you're using. So let's do an example. If I have a line of credit that's a thousand dollar credit limit and I'm using three hundred dollars today, then my credit utilization ratio is 30 percent. And that's about where I want it to stay. If I get too much higher than 30 percent, it can start to have a negative impact on my score. Total amount owed makes sense. It includes all of the balances that you have on the different lines of credit, and the total amount can have an impact on the score. Lastly, number of accounts with balances. I do get the question sometimes, how many accounts with balances should I have? Unfortunately, because this score is so complicated, there's no way to say the exact number that is the best number to have. But they did do a survey of those with the higher credit scores in the US and they found that the average number of accounts with balances was four. So for those in the US that have the highest credit scores, they also have about four accounts with balances. And we can use that as a guide if we're looking for an answer to how many accounts should I have with a balance. The next category at 15% of our score is our length of credit history. Again, this has several different parts. It has to do with how long you've had accounts established. How long have you had any credit in your name? What's the age of your oldest account? What's the age of your newest account? And what's the average age of all of your accounts combined? The next category at 10% is credit mix. The algorithm likes to see a combination of revolving lines of credit and installment loans. I've put a little icon here next to each of those so you can get an idea of what I mean by each. A revolving line of credit is something like a credit card. An installment loan is something like an auto loan or a student loan or a mortgage. Now, if I have an installment loan, and I don't have a credit card, I could consider getting a credit card as a revolving line of credit to improve this credit mix category. Now it is only 10% of my total score, so it's probably not gonna have a giant impact, but if I'm looking for any edge I can get, this is one idea I may consider. I also wanna keep in mind though, if opening of a credit card is going to tempt me into more spending that might negatively impact my budget, it's probably not a good idea, good idea for me. But if I can have a credit card that's going to be used maybe for things I would already buy, and then I would pay that off every month, it could have a positive impact if I don't have any other revolving lines of credit. Now, if I have a credit card, but I don't have an installment loan, like an auto loan, I would probably not go out and apply for an auto loan in an effort to improve my credit mix because the cost versus the benefit of that is probably not going to work out in the long run in your favor. The last category is new credit at 10%. This includes the number of credit seeking inquiries that we've had. We've probably all heard that when you have your credit checked, it can negatively impact your score. And this is where that comes from. Yes, it can have an effect, but if we look at it in the overall scheme of what goes into our credit score, we can see that it's really just a very small percentage. So if we do need to have a new credit card or a new auto loan, it's best not to get too concerned about the impact that that is going to have on our score, especially if overall we have a pretty healthy credit profile. Now, if I'm working really hard on rebuilding my credit, I might want to refrain from taking on any new credit or having 
a credit report pulled for about six to 12 months so that I can focus on having some positive payment history and getting my credit utilization ratio at that 30% number. The other part of this new credit category is how long it's been since an account has been opened. So the more frequently we have new accounts coming onto our credit report, we can start to see some negative impact there. So it's best not to open too many lines of credit, especially in a short period of time. When you look at all of the different pieces of information that go into our credit score, we can see that this is actually a pretty complicated calculation. I think it's really important to understand the basics about how this score is made up, but we want to try not to get hung up on all of the different details because that can leave us feeling overwhelmed and unable to take the action we need to to get that really great score. When we're looking to build or maintain a strong credit score, there are four main things that we can really focus our time and our energy on. The first one of those is to check your credit report for errors. According to a study by the Federal Trade Commission, 5% of consumers had errors on their report that would lead to an increase in their credit scores if they got corrected. Checking your credit report is free. You want to use annualcreditreport.com. That's the website that was listed on an earlier slide the government sponsored website where you can get your totally free credit report from each one of the three bureaus every 12 months because this won't cost you anything except for a little bit of time and it could have an impact on your score I recommend this as the first step for someone that is focusing on building or maintaining a strong score the next tip is kind of simple you want to pay on time at least the minimum balance by the due date when we looked at our score calculation, payment history is 35% of that score. So that is going to be the best way to have the biggest impact on rebuilding a score if it's damaged or maintaining a strong credit score. The next is to use 30% or less of your available credit. This hits in the second biggest, the second biggest category the amounts owed category, which is also 30% of your score. It's pretty simple for anyone to figure out how much they should charge on their credit card at any given time. You can look on your statement, that will have your credit limit. Just simply take that number, multiply it by 30%, and that is the dollar amount that you wanna stay at or below. Now, even if I pay my card off every month, I still want to maintain 30% or less of that available credit being used at any given time. The reason is I don't know when my credit card company is going to report my balance to my credit report. Whatever that balance is that they report is what my score is going to be calculated on. So if I have a thousand dollar credit card and I bought plane tickets because I'm hoping to travel one day, that total up to $900, I am then using 90% of my available credit. If my credit card company reports that today and I pay it off tomorrow, it's not gonna matter that I made that payment and I dropped that utilization ratio down because my credit report's not gonna know. It's going to be calculating using that 90% credit utilization and that's gonna have a negative impact on my score. I recommend for those who are really concerned about getting the absolute highest score that they can, that they do this for each of their credit cards and try and spend no more than 30% of the amount they have available at any given time on that card. The last one is to avoid opening or closing new accounts. When we took a look at that score calculation, you can see that opening or closing accounts can hit your score in a couple of different categories. Let's look at opening a new account first. That will impact your new credit category, which is the 10%. You would have an inquiry when you opened a new credit card or line of credit. You would also have a shorter time period between when your last line of credit was opened. 
and then it can also impact the length of credit category that's 15% of your score because when you have a newer line of credit that might bring down the average for your credit accounts and that can have a negative impact in that length of credit category as well. Frequently when I talk to folks about closing accounts, they're asking me what type of impact that is going to have on their credit score. In general, it's not a good idea to close a credit card if you're trying to improve your credit score. The effect will happen in your 30% amounts owed category. If it's a credit card with an available limit, closing that card reduces the amount of credit you have available and can impact that credit utilization ratio. Depending on how long you've had that card open, it can also have an impact in the length of credit history category as well, that's 15%. But whether or not it's a good idea to close a credit card account does have to do more with more than just your credit score. A lot of times when people think about closing a credit card, they're looking at a card that they're not using anymore. One that might be a temptation to spend money that they don't want or need to spend, or one that they're having a little bit of trouble making sure it's secure. They're not using it a lot. So there's an opportunity for somebody to get a hold of that number and maybe use that account fraudulently without them being aware because it's just not something that they're doing business with on a regular basis. When it comes to closing accounts, I think we need to keep in mind our ultimate goals. If I'm going to apply for a large loan like a mortgage or a car, I may want to hold off on closing that account until after I make that transaction and then I might think more closely about closing that card, maybe seeing a small negative impact in my score as the result of that, but then being able to kind of let that score naturally come back up as I continue to take care of the larger areas of my credit, like paying my credit, paying my loan payments or credit card payments on time and keeping my credit utilization ratio at 30% or below. So for this particular tip, avoiding opening or closing accounts. That's a kind of a general rule, but we do need to keep in mind our own personal financial situations and our own personal goals to be guided about what the best action is for any one or another credit card or loan account. I hope that information has been helpful for you to understand how to get a great credit score. I know that credit can be kind of complicated, so I will be available on Facebook Live if you have any questions for me, or if you'd like to, you can reach out to me by email or by phone at the Credit Union, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thanks so much for joining me.